Hello, everyone. I'm Josh Oaks, and you're listening to the SmartSocial.com podcast. I'm so honored you're here, whether it's on YouTube, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else we're at here today. I want to thank you for being here because today it's all about that nutrition for the digital soul. We're making your kids not just talk about what's bad online, but also how do we how do we float in this digital world that we have and survive and thrive and get to where we need to go? Today, I have a friend of mine who is an absolute expert here today. Her name is Erica Spiegelman, and she is the author of an awesome book called The Rewired Life, her fourth book out. Erica, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I, I'm always like honored when you call and, and love having these discussions. So show us your book, please. Yeah. Real quick. A little plug. This is your fourth book. I'm so proud of you. The fourth Rewired book. Life. You're, yeah, thank you've you. Got, you've got a few, we're going to talk about this book in a sec, yeah. but you, you have, um, you have uh, your first book. Uh, tell us really quickly about yeah. your books. Okay, so the first book was called Rewired, very similar. Um, but the first book was, you know, um, a labor of love. And it was something that, you know, because I'm, a, I'm an addiction specialist and counselor, and that's my, uh, my training. So it, I originally wanted to write something to, give people the opportunity to learn how to be authentic, to have healthy relationships, create good boundaries, learn how to communicate when they entered recovery. So recovering from drugs and alcohol, recovering from anxiety, recovering from depression, recovering from eating disorders, you know, whatever it is in life, we're all dealt certain cards, right? And we all go through certain things. But a lot of the literature that I found out there about recovery was a lot of 12 step based programs. And you know, for me, I've been sober almost 12 years myself. Um, and so not only did I go back to school UCLA and, and then study the brain and study addiction and depression and all these other things, but I personally have gone through something. So I, I understood um, how it helped me. And that's why, you know, um, as an undergraduate, I was a literature major and I just started writing too. I was always a writer. So I was writing about how to be more authentic in life and, and how to drop the masks and how to learn how to identify our narratives, our stories that we've once told ourselves. A lot of the times when we're young, um, you know, we tell ourselves stories, I'm not good enough, you know, uh, negative self-talk, you know, there's, there's so many things that, that go through our heads and also a lot of people have been through trauma. So it's about now emerging from that place and learning how to rewrite our narratives. And that's kind of how my first, the first book, you know, came to be, and it did so well in the addiction field and, and in the recovery world um, that my publishers wanted me to do something, and I wanted to do something for the general public. So that's what the rewired life is. It's not it's not addiction based. There's nothing to do about recovery. You won't see the word drugs and alcohol in it, um, but it is about nutrition and technology and healthy relationships and nutrition and um, balance and learning how to communicate and evolve and values there's a whole list of values so if you want to start to understand how you want to live morally and so i just thought it would be great to present that to the that's world. amazing yeah. um, i love it because what you're doing is and we at smartsocial.com believe in giving children and adults a vocabulary so they know how to go through things yeah a step-by-step -step process. For example, I'm remodeling my house and I go to YouTube to learn from the world's best people that redo stairs, they redo yeah. their kitchen. And I have so much more confidence, Erica, as you, in your field, you're an expert. But when I'm remodeling a kitchen or learning how the stairs go, I go look to an expert. They expand my vocabulary. They teach me, although I have a good exactly. foundation on how to use the power drill, they go, look, <laughs> this, is the, this is the art of it. I want you to approach it like this. And while that's a very physical example, it's so true with what you're doing. You're giving people, here's all the values I want you to know about. You pick what you want and where you, how you want to build those stairs. Am right. I right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's offering tools to people, you know, yeah. I think emotionally like the, you know, the title is a rewired life, creating a better life through self-care and emotional awareness. Like you said, as kids, we don't have the awareness necessarily of what we're going through emotionally. You know, it, we feel pain, it's, we, feel, we feel sad, um, but a lot of the times we're taught or told or through social media that, you know, that's not what people want to see and, you know, put on a happy face and, and, and why don't you Photoshop yourself to look happier and better and, you know, and so it, it really creates a dis disruption emotionally for people and, and sometimes people don't, you know, know how to deal with that. 
Okay, so talk to us about yeah. a couple of your tips. Uh, we're going to start with tip number one, establishing a healthy relationship with your devices. Because we live in a digital world. People listening to this right now are parents of kids 8 to 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Social media and digital devices are taking over their children's lives. I'm yeah. just going to throw that out there and paint a picture. If you're, if, if you're listening to this on iTunes or you're watching us on YouTube, if you feel parents that there's a new app out each week that you have to protect your kids from if you feel like screen time is is stealing your kids from presence from them being present right now mm -hmm. or if you feel like your kids are sometimes quiet or going to other people or you don't know what they're doing online you are a normal parent and that this is the world we live in unfortunately Erica give us a tip or two on how we can establish a healthy relationship with devices both for parents and kids well, boundaries. Boundaries is the key word here. So, you know, just like any anything else in our lives, we need boundaries. They're safe. They're actually they're the most healthy things you could create. It's also establishing some a way for you to learn a little bit about yourself better. So really with kids, I would sit down with them and for the parents, you know, kind of model the same behavior. So if you're going to say to your kids, when we sit down for dinner, no one's going to bring their phones, iPads to the table the parents have to do the same. And so again, mirroring is really important. You know, I know you and I have talked about this and I, I did one of your um, conferences, right? It was a, the digital conference, which was fantastic. But I remember discussing this a lot, which, you know, parents tend to like tell their kids not to do something and then they're sitting there on their phones as well. So it's about mirroring, you know, proper behavior. Um, also, I would say time limit, time management. Kids don't understand how to manage their time and feel overwhelmed and anxious. And now, you know, it's the highest rates of depression for kids between the ages of, well, all I know is 10 to 20 years old. I mean, they're finding this a lot in high school too. And in college, like early on in college freshman year, it just, it becomes, it becomes very hard for them to deal emotionally, you know? That's a huge deal. Okay. So boundaries mirroring huge theme this year with mm -hmm. people and we're hearing it a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Modeling positive behavior because your kids are going to mirror. I was listening to a podcast yesterday and Dr. Phil was the guest, ironically, Dr. Mm -hmm. Phil. And he said the worst phrase in the world in his Texas accent is, is say, do as I say, not as I do, because yeah. parents are always doing something different sometimes, even though right. they tell them what to do. Fascinating. Right. And then right. time management. Okay, so talk to us now about some tips that you have for unplugging for both parents and kids. Yeah, well, I'll also judge this. This this relates to the your, your just the point you just made too. I just want to make sure parents know this to mirror mirror things emotionally as well. Like if you can't express yourself and say, "Listen, I had a hard day too. Let's put our phones away. Let's be present together." Or, "Mommy's a little sad. I want us to just connect and bond." Or, "Let's get in bed and watch a movie." I mean. You know, parents, this is, this is the problem that I see a lot with my clients and my clients are, you know, I think they're, they're usually 18 to 26 of the majority of my clients. Okay. So we're still talking about not, not too far from your, you know, your base, but, but it is important for them to know that, you know, kids feel like their parents are hiding from them. They feel like, you know, well, my mom's not that emotional or my dad's not that emotional. And yes, they are. Every human being is emotional. Every, every human being is going through something. So, you know, stop hiding from our children. Let's, let's be real with them. They appreciate it. They also, again, will model what, what they see, you know, so if you could show them that, you know, you're vulnerable, then they'll be vulnerable. I'm sorry, I just had to get that in there, but yeah. I love that. That is really great. Rather than just modeling good screen time, putting your phone down, but also modeling being vulnerable. And, and you know what? And also my aunt, I have two teenage cousins who are, um, you know, one is 14 and one is 16. And they, you know, every time they post and they don't get enough likes, immediately they erase the post. And so I've had a lot of talks to, with them about it. And their mom, who's my aunt, you know, um, you know, she was saying to me, I had to get off certain accounts. I was feeling anxious. You know, I was comparing. And so parents are going through the same things. Their parents are on Instagram. Their parents are on Facebook. It's not like adults, you know, don't know from social media. So it's, again, if you can relate on that level, like, you know, hey, if something's making you anxious, let's unfollow it. Let's talk about it. Why is it making you anxious? You know? Mm, that's so true. Anyway, I, I, just, I like your layer on that, your take on that. Yeah. Okay, let's Sorry. jump on to unplugging. What are yeah. some tips that parents and students can use to unplug with this addiction that I'll be the first to say it, and I'm the first to say it on stage, I'm addicted to my phone. And I don't mm -hmm. think enough people say that. I think we, I have an inbox addiction with Gmail and everything else. And as soon as we say that, then it's easier to get over it. 
What are some tips that you have uh, to help people like me or students? I mean, a one hour a day rule is, is, is what I tell people is like put down the phone for one full hour a day, whether that's going out nature, going outside, exercising, being at home and reading, writing and journaling, um, you know, whatever it is, but, but it is really to unplug. And also I try to say like, do the TV time later, you know, it's just, it's an hour to have some healthy solitude. And that's really the issue is like, we think we're, we're okay. Isolation and solitude are two different things. So isolation is, you know, unplugging and, and doing something that is not good for yourself, you know, and, and kind of being alone. And, and, I, and healthy solitude is being alone and doing something that is really wonderful for yourself, that's, that's nurturing, that is honoring what you love in life, you know? And so for me, it's just simple. It's an hour rule. And if you start that, it's just like meditation. If you do a five minute meditation every day, you'll slowly feel better, you know? <laughs> I mean, people that learn how to meditate, it's like they jump to like, Oh, I should do an hour. I should do 20 minutes. Just do five minutes. And just like I say with, you know, unplugging, it's like just an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can, I mean, you think about it, it's not that long, you know? Yeah. And let's get practical. Could it be a hobby that doesn't include a screen time for, for me? It's, it's using the power Maybe. drill on painting or something. And honestly, uh, tell me if this is unhealthy, but I'll podcast while I do something mindless, like painting that the remodel. And it's so much fun. I have way more energy at the end of it because I'm learning yeah. and I'm doing a dumb move. Now, if there's measurement and I have to cut and stuff, I just can't do both. I yeah. have to turn it off so that I can do my calculations. But it's so much fun doing what I call dumb work where you're painting and it's qualitative, not quantitative. Yeah. Right, right. I feel stronger at the end. Is that what you're talking about? That solitude yeah. that can be good? Yeah, you know, there's no wrong or right way to do anything, right? So if, if for you, you're learning and you're, you, you are soaking in information that makes you a more happy, healthy person, then that's great. And it's while you're doing another hobby that you enjoy, right? I think that's great. But, but also, you know, it's, but, but sometimes we do, I'm just saying, you know, here and there need quiet, you know, we need to hear our own thoughts because we live in a world of distraction, Josh. And this is what this is all about is like distracting ourselves with apps and phone and, and email. I don't want everyone to be distracted because then guess what you lose, you lose the voice of, 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 of the most important voice of, of your own. Like that's the problem is we hear the voices of NPR. We hear the voices of, you know, people on podcasts. We hear the voice and, and guess what? I have no time to actually process and think mm -hmm. about my own thoughts. And so again, in moderation, yes, do something, do a hobby and, and one day do it in silence and one day do it with the podcast going. Mm, that's good. You can hear that inner silent voice. I love that. Okay. That's terrific. All right, so we've talked a little bit about some healthy relationship tips. You've talked about boundaries, mirroring, time management, uh, isolation, the bad solitude, and good solitude, good stuff. Um, talk to us about how to spot warning signs. What can parents do to spot warning signs when it comes to their children or themselves using mm -hmm. technology maybe too much? I think disengaging from you know their old friendships, disengaging from conversations and communication with, with the parents. Um, getting to isolate. So again, you know, I have a whole chapter on solitude and we talk a lot about the difference between isolation and solitude, but watch for the red flags, you know, of um, change of behavior, aggressiveness, um, frustration, you know, if kids are getting frustrated or they're snapping really quickly and that's not typical of them, you know, again, you're dealing with an age group that, you know, is hormonal and there's, there's a lot going on, but it, it's time to sit down and communicate. You know, communicate with your kids if you're starting to see um, that kind of frustrated or anxious behavior emerging out of nowhere. So it's it's being aware and checking in and having that kind of um, I call it emotional attunement. So it's like you know, like you tune a guitar, right? Um, we also tune into each other. So if I if you came home from school, Josh, and I saw that you were a little frustrated, I wouldn't just say, "What's wrong in the other room? What's wrong? Oh, nothing, nothing, mom." You know, okay, what do you want to eat later? No, it's sitting down and looking you in the eyes, okay? Making eye, eye contact and sitting there, you know, in the same, same room and saying, tell me about your day. You seem a little anxious. You seem a little sad. What's going on? You know, instead of this like floating conversation through a house or I see, you know, parents pick up their kids like, oh, when I picked them up, you know, we talked briefly. Not when you're driving in a car and music is on and, you know, oh, the drivers aren't good, you know. 
that's not attunement, attuned to your children, you know? And so really it's just about making eye contact and sitting there and having some moment. Mm, that's powerful. Okay. Talk to me more about how to be vulnerable with your kids. There's people that have listened to some of our past episodes where some of the guests have said, love on your children. And, and this is what they generally want to hear. Talk to us about how do, what are some tactical tips or some tips we might not have thought about, about how to be, for, let's set relevance aside, how to be relevant with your kids, but how to be authentic and vulnerable so that they can see that in the parent. Well, again, what we were saying is to communicate, you know, but first of all, the word authenticity means you're the author of your own life, right? So th that's what it means in Latin, if we were to like go back to the, the real word. Um, so you are the author of your own life and, and all of us are. And so for that parent, it's important for your child to know that that parent is writing the story as they go, that they experience the highs and lows that these kids are going through, um, that they're having tough times, that they have issues with their friends too, that they have issues with their bodies as well, that they have issues, you know, in general, in terms of insecurity and, and fears and joy and all these things, you know, it's, it's just important that parents allow their children to see them as, as vulnerable, as, as that they can also endure, they can also go through, you know, emotions that maybe aren't so um, comfortable. You know, because if, if, if that's the thing is like, we can't put a mask on all the time. The whole point about authenticity is taking off the mask. And a, and a lot of teenagers, obviously we know this, myself included, you know, in high school had a, a mask on with the hippie kids. And then I had a mask on with the preppy kids. And then I was in the, I was a singing, I was a singer for the jazz band and had those groups, you know, I had so many masks. And then I go home to my parents and they wouldn't know half the things I did. So. Yeah. Again, that th th this is very common, but it's important to know that that's authenticity is just is is just really showing one one face and one side of yourself. That's terrific. Okay, so a lot of students. There's some some students at a school that I spoke to in Texas this week. A lot of the students are taking a social media detox from their phone. They've deleted their Instagram, their Snapchat, and their fa they're usually not on Facebook, but anything mm -hmm. else that they're on, just from their phone. And they're um, still texting and calling, which is good. Okay. And uh, they're taking a week off, which I love. I did a week yeah. off in August, and yeah. I came back a lot more <laughs> aware of what this thing does to us. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to do another one? What do you tell people about <clears throat> a social media detox? Getting relevant with that? It's uh, have you done one of these? And and what what do you t what do you talk about? What are your what's your advice there? Yeah, you know, I mean, when I travel to Europe or when I travel like abroad, I, I, I really tend to like not, not go on any social media, you know, or even use texting. And I, and I always get, I love being on a plane and not being on a phone or, you know, walking around a city and just not having the phone, you know, it's just, it's amazing. It makes you feel more present and mindful about everything. Um, my husband, interestingly enough, put a, um, a block on his Instagram for when he's at work. So now with the Apple phones, you, you, could, you could go on there and, and say from the, from the time of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., I want to block Instagram on the phone and it won't come up. Mm, yeah, that's the screen time limit. The screen For everybody listening right now, you go to your, just, just to get super nerdy and tactical, you go to your little settings button, which we're going to hit right there. Yeah. And then if you scroll down and you type in screen time, S-C-R-E-E-N. You'll see screen time. Those of you that are on YouTube joining us, you'll see that up at the top, a little hard to see. Click on screen time. And there's something called downtime that Erica is hinting at right now. And downtime is the first thing. I have downtime from 9.30 p.m. to 6 a.m. So that I, it hides a lot of the apps that are social media. Oh, that's goes, awesome. Oh, you can't, you shouldn't be using these. Are you sure you want to unlock them? It requires a lot more clicks. Yeah. So your husband locks downtime during work. That's yeah, awesome. He started doing that. You know, he's a scientist and he's, he's, you know, really actually busy at work and he just found himself, you know, having like a project to do or something going on and he would just, you know, want to procrastinate so he could think about it more, you know, and, he, and it just, it started adding up a little bit every time he'd hop on Instagram. So he, he tried that with Instagram and he said, you know, I feel so much more productive. I feel like I've gotten so much more done this week. I don't even think about it. I know it's like a no go. So I encourage, I think that that would be wonderful. Um, personally for me, you know, I, I just had a baby, so I don't really have as much time to sit on these apps as like I used to. <laughs> um, so I think with, as life changes, 
those things occur too. But I, I would encourage anyone just to try it. It's not, you know, it's, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of technology. And that's kind of the chapter in my book about technologies is that's the subtitle. Um, because, you know, th there's so many wonderful things about technology. And then there's also a lot of, a lot of ways in which it distracts us. So it's about finding that balance. And I think if trying these things, I think if it helps, there's nothing to lose, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, people that, parents that are listening to this right now, I did this for a whole week. I, I announced it and here's how I felt a little bit better because we're really talking about addiction on this. This is a great topic. And Eric, I'm so thankful that you're here. If you're looking for just a little bit of a nudge of how do I do this? What does it look like? Uh, well, here you are, Mr. Practical and Tactical Nerd here. I want to talk to you about, it doesn't have to be a whole week to do this. You don't have to go cold turkey like I did. And if you do, no matter what you do, I posted a photo and said, I'm taking a week off on digital detox. I'm going to go disconnect. And I just told people, text me, call me. Because I do believe that the good side of the internet is when we connect and we communicate. Those are the good C's. I have what's called the tipping point, my nerdy little tiny slides that I teach students and parents. Connecting and communicating are really good. And that's what email does, texting and phone calling. Yay. Yeah. It's when we start consuming all of our time on the bad side when it tilts this way. Consuming, you're scrolling through the feed to try and get that uh, addiction feel that you're going to get, that, that rush of right. every other drug. Every drug has it and the inbox. So consuming... On, on, on that thing. And then also another thing that makes it bad when it tilts that way is when we start comparing ourselves to others. Right. That's what leads your children to depression, anxiety, and everything else. So it doesn't have to be a week, but if you just do it for a day, I've got a friend named Abby who she was telling me at church one day, she said, crazy idea, but I delete it. And then when I'm in Wi-Fi uh, later on that evening, I'll re-download the app. I went, what? She goes, yeah, I re-download it every day, every other day. I'm like you're crazy, and now I don't see it as crazy as much. Yeah, yeah. You delete it, and you say, "I'll be back on here tomorrow." And you, yeah, there's yeah. no way to download it. You're going to use too much data when you're away, so you're not downloading it when you're not right. on Wi-Fi. It's a smart idea. Yeah, it's 80 megs, but it's unlimited when you're at home. Right. Within reason. So I, she takes micro detoxes, which I think is a genius idea. You're just you're That's off for a little while. So parents, have a dialogue with your kids. As Eric is saying right now, it really is, let's be authentic. Maybe do it with your kids. Maybe share with your kids, hey, I'm scrolling too much. Sometimes I feel this way when I'm yeah. going to this, the um, consuming and comparing. Those are the two bad C's that we have. If it's all consuming, you're in line at Bank of America and you're like, i got to check my phone. Whoa, that is a beat. Whoa, do I really need to do that? I find myself doing that all the time. I'm gonna in bed. People that. go into but, bed, you know, and they, they start looking on their phone instead of like, you know, reading or watching TV. What happened to TV even? <laughs> you know, they just sit on their Instagram. Yeah. I'm a, f a former entertainment marketer. And when I was at Disney, they, um, we called the TV the first screen and this was the second screen. Yeah. That has flipped. This is the first screen. Netflix is now in the background. The oh, second. For sure, I agree with that. Yeah, it's crazy. Right? It is. It's gotten really crazy. It's insane. Hey, I really appreciate your time. You've got to go feed the baby here in a few Thank minutes, you. so you got a hard stop. But get, I want to give you last word, Erica. Yeah. Talk to talk to people about maybe one of the biggest frequently asked questions and one of the big, maybe big, biggest misunderstandings for us normal people <laughs> about something in our life that might be either t distracting us from things or a way that we can be more authentic with those around us. What's one of your bigger tips? Uh, you know, I think in general is to, to pick a hobby like you were talking about before. I think this is the best thing to do in life. I think we have come so far from learning learning, learning about ourselves, learning what we love, learning what calms us, learning what makes us more mindful. So if anything, pick a hobby, like, you know, if you have a hobby, great. A lot of, a lot of my clients will say like, I don't really have hobbies. I don't really know what I love to do. Well, try something until it feels good. You know, one week, maybe go on hikes. If you live somewhere where the weather permits, you know, maybe one week, read a book, Get a, get, a, get a coloring book like I have for, for adults and kids and try that. Uh, put it on music. Like you said, have a project, you know, start a project, paint, do, do something, learn a new language for a week. There's so, much, there's so much to do out there. Instead of us sitting at home on these phones or iPads, it's to pick a new hobby every week or be interested in something and learn, you know, try something new every week. I couldn't agree more with you. Now, I have something really quickly I want to share with everybody. And, and Erica, thank you for joining us here today. Yeah. If you want to take the next step and want to keep your kids safe online, we have a brand new 100% free webinar at smartsocial.com that is designed to do something a little bit interesting. And I'm going to share with you all right now. 
It's called How to Navigate the Negative Effects of Student Social Media and Help Your Student Shine Online 100% Free. You can instantly unlock it. And it has some of the bigger questions that we get all the time. Why should you hold off until this very important age to get your student a cell phone? The next is the right age, the correct age for students to start using social media. And yes, we're going to show you our menu that psychologists and counselors all over the world suggest and we've adapted to make it work for families. The seven apps your students should avoid. Then why you need to talk with your kids about these four dangerous social media challenges, one of them being Momo, even though it is a hoax, it's an opening for a dialogue. How to find out what your kids are really doing online. I give you some tactics, tips behind the scenes on what to do, what you can do to get your kids off their screens. We have a bunch of nerdy techniques. We've already talked about podcasting, a few other ones. What every middle schooler and why they need to actually start planning their on online footprint in middle school. We teach you about Google results, Instagram, a website portfolio that gets the kids thinking about their future with a purpose instead of right now as a pastime. I also teach you something really important to protect your children, how to turn off Snap Map and how to find out if your student has a second in Instagram account that we call a Finstagram account. You can click the link below to join either our newsletter or our free webinar that costs you nothing. It's instantly on demand. You can take it here today. You can share it with as many people as you want. Educators, this is a free resource that we have for all of you out there. We are in the business of making sure you can navigate online safer. Erica, I want to thank you today You're for awesome. your time. You're thank so you. helpful. Thank you for everything. And I, I love your site. I want to go on there myself. <laughs> Thank you so much. All of you that are listening today, go pick up Erica's book. You can click the link below to order her brand new, The Rewired Life uh, on Amazon or wherever it's sold. And we are at Smart Social are here to help. And as always, not to plug, but keep it light, bright, and polite because your kids are watching. And let's all make sure that we're using social media in a way that's positive and full of gratitude. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys all very soon. Erica, you are awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.